Hello there, thanks for watching this final episode of Teaching from the Book of Titus. We've been doing this over quite a while now, and it's uh, really been a great thing to spend time in the Word of God, to spend time through this. Now, we're probably going to start another book uh, in the Bible after this, but uh, we're really just winding up Titus. Titus is a fantastic little book, and I've really enjoyed talking about it. And it's a very challenging book because it speaks to us not only about wonderful truth concerning salvation and the Saviour and the working of God and how God works out his purposes, but it deals very specifically about how that affects Christian life, how it affects the way we think, the way we behave and what we do. <clears throat> As you come to the end of this little epistle, and the Apostle writes these words at the end of uh, Titus. It says, um, when I shall send Artemis unto the Ortichagus, be diligent to come unto me to Nicopolis, for I have determined there to winter. Bring Zenos the lawyer and Apollos on their journey diligently, that nothing be wanting unto them. And let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses, that they be not unfruitful. All that are with me, salute thee, greet them that love us in the faith. Grace be with you all. Amen. Lovely words that the Apostle Paul writes in conclusion of this letter. Now, whether we, in the few moments that we take each week to do this, deal with these um, three or four verses um, will just depend how things go. But I want to just pick out a few things because Paul is winding the letter up and he's bringing to a conclusion the thoughts and the, the statements that, of course, the Spirit of God has given to him to teach. It's the wonderful thing that this book that we read is not just the words of men, but it's the word of God through a man. It is God in his great wisdom communicating to the Apostle Paul that the word of God might be written and recorded and presented, not just to Titus, but for all generations. Now, here's a wonderful thing. Paul says, I'm going to send Artemis or Tychicus to you. So Titus will need support. Now, there's a wonderful thing that God's servants need fellowship. If you were to read, as I'm sure you do, um, these New Testament epistles regularly, you will find Paul talks about this one and that one. He talks about beloved brothers, the beloved Persis. He talks about <clears throat> those who laboured with him in the gospel. He talks about sisters at the end of Philippians, and he greatly valued the fellowship of other Christians. I wonder how much we value the fellowship of God's people. Titus is on the island of Crete. Things will be hard and difficult, and it's been a tough uh, assignment that he's been given. He has to set in order things that are lacking in the church there amongst God's people. He's to identify elders. He's to refute those who are false teachers. He's to teach a new generation of Christians. Mind you, I have to say, what a privilege. Wouldn't it be wonderful if in our day that we had the privilege and we had the joy of educating a new generation of Christians? Shameful really it is that so often that's not the case. And yet, most of us would bow our heads and say, Lord, we would love it to be that way. We would just love to see folks saved and we'll have to question our hearts, question our, our um, enthusiasm in the gospel, qu question our prayer time before God, question our passion for the things of God. But it would be wonderful to have to do what Titus did and educate a new generation, a new generation including the old and the young, the men and the women, the servants and the masters, all types because the gospel is effective for all areas and all people in society. He's sending to him these dear people, Artemis or Tychicus. Now, Tychicus' his name appears at the end of some letters in the New Testament. He seems to be an amanuensis, a man who wrote for the Apostle Paul. But uh, Titus needs him, and he needs the company of Christians, but it might be they're being sent to replace him because he says to him, do your best to come to me at Nicopolis. So he's asking Timothy, uh, sorry, Titus, he's asking him to come to Nicopolis. Now, you have a little hint in there that, it's, that it depends on the will of God. Do your best to come. And really that is the way things are in Christian life and experience. James writes at the end of his letter, don't plan and don't organise without saying the will of God needs to be taken into account. It must be in the will, if the Lord will. And we're going to leave it there for today. For We're really just about four and a half minutes long and uh, we try to keep these little video teaching blogs short just because of how much time it takes to upload them. But I hope today that this might touch your heart. We need fellowship and we're not the only one who can do the work. There are those who would go to replace Titus potentially in Crete and Great men like the Apostle Paul needed company. He wants Titus to come to Nicopolis to him. But what we plan and do, we do, if the Lord will. I trust the Lord would bless his word greatly to us today. Thank you for watching.